Before the midnight mass, it is customary to uh, chant the proclamation of the birth of Christ, which is taken from the Roman martyrology, which I've been reading from uh, in this series of sermons. But I wanted to share it today because it's a very beautiful text and is a good way for us to really focus on the reality that we're celebrating at Christmas. The martyrology reads, the 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace, in the 21st century since Abraham our father in faith came out of Ur of the Chaldees, in the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king. In the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel. In the 194th Olympiad. In the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome. In the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by his most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and when nine months had passed since his conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man, the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh. The reason that the martyrology has such a beautiful and substantial text is because of the greatness of this day. And what makes this great day great is proclaimed by the angels in the reading in St. Luke's Gospel immediately preceding the one we had at Mass just now, where the angels say to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. Now, there's a lot of things in just these two sentences that we could unpack, but what I want to focus on is the fact that Jesus is called here in this announcement, Savior. And I think to understand Jesus as Savior, we need to look at, uh, or we can look at, the saints of this week. So today, not only are we celebrating of the Nativity, but we also celebrate the martyrdom of St. Anastasia, who is commemorated as one of those holy women listed in the Roman canon of the Mass. The martyrology says of her, the same day, that is the 25th of December, the birthday of St. Anastasia, who in the time of Diocletian first suffered a severe and harsh imprisonment on the part of her husband, Publius, in which, however, she was much consoled and encouraged by the confessor of Christ, Chrysogonus. Afterwards, she was thrown into prison again by order of Florus, and finally, having her hands and feet stretched out, she was tied to stakes with a fire kindled about her, in the midst of which she entered her martyrdom. Or perhaps we celebrate the proto-martyr on the 26th of December. Again, at Jerusalem, the birthday of St. Stephen, the first martyr, who was stoned to death by the Jews shortly after the ascension of our Lord. We celebrate St. John, who did not die a martyr, but that's simply because he didn't die when they boiled him in oil. They did try to kill him. On the 28th, in Bethlehem of Judah, again, this is all from the martyrology, the birthday of the holy innocents who were massacred by Christ, for Christ, by King Herod. On the 29th, at Canterbury in England, the birthday of St. Thomas, Bishop and Martyr, who for the defense of justice and ecclesiastical immunities was struck with the sword in his own basilica by a faction of impious men and thus went to Christ. The same day we celebrate St. David the King. We celebrate, because the feast day of Christmas this year falls on a Sunday, the feast of the Holy Family on the 30th, and on the 31st, St. Sylvester Pope, who is not a martyr. I've always wondered why poinsettias, but 
then as I was looking at the liturgical calendar over the years, I realized all of that red is very appropriate for all of the martyrs that we celebrate in the octave of Christmas. But what does that have to do with Christmas itself? The fact is, we can't celebrate Christmas properly if we don't appreciate what we are being saved from. In the reading for Christmas Eve in the Office of Reading, St. Augustine tells us the answer to that. You would have suffered eternal death had he not been born in time. Never would you have been free from sinful flesh had he not taken on himself the likeness of sinful flesh. You would have suffered everlasting unhappiness had it not been for his mercy. You would never have returned to life had he not shared your death. <laughs> You would have been lost if he had not hastened to your aid. You would have perished had he not come. Let us then joyfully celebrate the coming of our salvation and redemption. Let us celebrate the festive day on which he, who is the great and eternal day, came from the great and endless day of eternity into our own short day of time. So again, we cannot celebrate the birth of our Savior adequately if we don't appreciate just what we're being saved from. People like to use the words joy and peace around Christmas, not recognizing that what those words really mean for Christians, but also not recognizing the fact that on the natural level, most people live difficult lives and are not happy most of the time in an earthly sense of the word. We don't call this a valley of tears for nothing. Certainly, there are, more pe there are people who are more optimistic because of their temperament. There are also people who have been sheltered from a lot of the evil in the world and therefore do not feel it as heavily as others. But the majority of people have also come to accept ideologies by which they ignore or choose not to recognize evil in the world. And many people simply just drug themselves, as I've spoken about recently, be that with food, alcohol, actual pharmaceuticals and controlled substances, social media, etc., etc., etc. But in the end, most people are not happy because ultimately we can never be perfectly happy in this life because we were not made for this life. We were created to be happy with God, and we are certainly always going to be less happy than we should be without Jesus Christ as part of our lives completely. Our life as Christians is one long martyrdom. It's not always bloody, and it's not always uh, the most painful, but it is yet our reality as the saints of this octave that we will be celebrating teach us. Now, if you've mortified yourself properly, and by that I mean you haven't started eating all of the cookies and all of the cake and all of the other things that uh, you should not have been doing before today, then you will appreciate them more today. Some of you may be cookied out at this point. But the real celebration, of course, is not just in the food, although today is definitely a day to enjoy that. I won't go as far as to say as some people do that there are no calories today because that would be ridiculous, but certainly today is a day to feast. But more importantly, we don't want to look for our joy in these earthly pleasures. They're good, they're when used properly in moderation at the right times, but ultimately our real joy has to be found in Christ because ultimately it is the only joy that we can Everything else is transitory and illusory. But regardless of our life circumstances, because again, everyone has problems that they deal with in this valley of tears. No matter how bad your health may be, no matter what psychological wounds and burdens you're dealing with, whatever financial difficulties, etc., whatever it is, we should all be able to find joy and consolation in the word of St. Paul to the Romans. I quote here from chapter 8. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? 
As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, with these words, and with this true joy that we can find in Christ, we should truly be able then to celebrate Christmas, especially today and every day.